Wow. Plays really well, but it's upside down. Get ready for the next round. Hey guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade. Today I thought I would give you a bit of an update um, on the arcade and everything that's in it. Uh, very briefly, just going to go around and sort of give you an idea where I'm going to take some of these games into the new year and share my thoughts on really what 2018 is probably going to shape up for the arcade and, and the activities that I'll be doing. Because I must admit, like over the last year or so, it's been a huge effort, guys, to get the arcade to where it is today. And it seems like every weekend I'm doing something, I'm going out doing a major mission, bringing in a game. And it's been super fun. It's been absolutely awesome. And I'd love to just keep doing that. I mean, the pickup side of things, guys, is absolutely the one of the best parts of this hobby. Um, I just love going out and picking up games, um, but I just, I can't, obviously can't do that <laughs> forever. Um, I do think though there's an opportunity to still pick up some games. I think I've got some games I probably want to move on and uh, maybe sell and get some more space for some other games. You know, I'm even keen to look at the possibility of, you know, even buying some games to, you know, try them out and see if I really, really like them and if they can win a space in the arcade. Uh, and if they don't, then, you know, then maybe I'll move them on after a period of time, at least gives, you know, gives an opportunity to document them and do the video, do the pickup and all that good stuff, which, you know, again, I, I really, really do enjoy. But. On the flip side of all of that, there is still a lot to be done in the arcade and you know I've been doing a little bit of soul searching thinking where you know I've talked about this journey before like where is this all going to sort of end and of course there's really really no end until I cark it um, but you know there's there's always there's a, there's a vision there's something I'm always striving for uh, in here which keeps me in this mode of you know um, trying to pick things up and improve the the arcade and, and basically I sort of I thought to myself you know what is it and it really is you know I, I think I've said it before at some point I'd like to create the ultimate arcade for me 
you know, my ultimate arcade. And of course, that may not necessarily be your ultimate arcade, because it's personal, right? You know, there's machines in here, there's games that I like that you might not might not like, and and vice versa, obviously. And so many games out there and what people like, but. I'm sure there's some things in here that uh, that you do enjoy. <laughs> Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching. But um, it, it is pretty much a sort of a it's a personal thing for me to try and get this room to be in a sort of a this ultimate state. And I must admit, guys, I've been looking around the room, even, <laughs> even looking around behind me here now. There's so many little nice things that I've done in here for for me anyway that I you know. I'm almost, I'm in awe actually when I look around the room and again very thankful and very grateful for what I have here um, because it's it's so nice to have be surrounded by all the things that you love and I think in some ways you know when probably when you create your, your own space and all the things that you love it gives you that nice feeling, right? It just gives you a nice feeling. You've got all the nice sort of, it's not It's not about nice things either. It's about special things that actually mean something to you. Um, and I think in some ways, having selected all the things in here, and maybe you've done the same in your games room, you select all the things that you want and being just being around them is a nice thing. And just seeing, all the things that you love i don't know i don't know it's bizarre guys i don't know if you if you guys sort of feel the same way about you know some of your stuff that you've got you know it's just comforting to have that so uh anyway enough of the <laughs> enough of the uh the big vision statement um i uh i will continue one day at a time you know new challenges and new things come up like the basketball that came up last week <laughs> that was such a surprise and again so cool now to add that into the arcade and it is in here so i think what we'll do is we'll now swing around we'll look at each machine again and um i'll let you know where i'm at with stuff and what's likely to come up uh in future episodes so let's take a look Well guys, first up is the Astro City, and uh, as I mentioned before, this guy is absolute keeper for me. What I've been doing lately is I have upgraded the software um, on the Jammer Pi, because I didn't have the latest uh, version of RPK on here, so I put that on there, and it's sort of, it's a better sort of setup for the menu. And in fact, I had started doing some um, sorting of the games and bits and pieces, but I still need to do a lot more. But the thing here is that I really want to get all the shmups, uh, shoot 'em ups sorted on here. And the best way to do that is to um, use Final Burn Alpha actually for a lot of the shoot 'em ups. So I actually got a new image on here and I'm now using Final Burn Alpha for pretty much most of the games rather than MAME, uh, only because, especially for shoot 'em ups and cave games in particular, uh, they run better on FBA. So. That's what I started doing. Uh, at the moment, I've really got a mix of old school and new school, um, <laughs> old school and new school uh, games in here. Um, I've just got to go back again and segregate them um, so that I've got all the, you know, the 80s to 90s stuff uh, together, and then you know the good shoot 'em ups from the 90s through to 2000 uh, sorted out. But yeah, now that you know games like um, Dangun Fever on uh, that I think played pretty poorly in, in MAME before, and now it plays really well. Wow, plays really well, but it's upside down. Right. Okay, so that wasn't a great example. <laughs> so, let's look at another one. I'm trying to think of one that didn't play very well. Some of these Dudon Patchy, the later ones, still um, still won't work on the Jammer Pi, like the really later ones, like over sort of year 2000. I need another solution for that, talk about that later. Um, but the original Dudon Patchy works well. And the reason why I've got two showing, guys, I've still got the other one from the original MAME driver, so I've got to see which one I'm actually running here. Okay. Okay. 
guys, I need some serious time to play these games. Oh shoot, wow. Um, because they're just awesome. But you need to sort of get yourself in the zone and, and play them, but they're just, they're just cracking. love these shoot them ups I really do and this is the thing guys so what I want to do is like get all these shmups sorted out and start sort of going through them and just spending time like you know just having one loaded up I've said this before just have one loaded up and turn this light off here and um, just enjoy it you know the one game and just try and get really good at it and then go through them because you know they, these are just so good. Oh shoot! Couldn't quite get through there. And again, this monitor and stuff is just ridiculously, stupidly good. <laughs> Still looks fantastic guys and still highly recommended so yeah um you know we could spend a long time just uh just playing these um that was wasted but um wow a little bit of slow down there yeah i have to double check to see you know which ones are running maim and as i was sort of halfway through it so i was converting well, not converting but I was just getting the FBI, um, final burn alpha ones running with main and I did this a little while ago and then <laughs> come back I can't remember which ones I did so anyway there's, there's plenty here to do uh, to get this sorted out even the exit buttons I'm not sure if all of them work I'm not sure if this one's going to get me back out doesn't look like it so I might have to exit out on the keyboards so anyway guys um, yeah it's basically configuration work for this but then I would deeply want to get into some shmups so that's what I'm going to do on the Astro let's flick over to the blast right guys well the blast is in place of course because I think the last time you saw this I had it just finished it out into the middle of the room and of course now it is sitting here next to the Astro city where it belongs <laughs> nice little Japanese candy cab corner I've got going on here and um, again the screen, I, can't, I just can't, get, I still can't get over it. I can't, it's just too good. It's really, really nice. Uh, the MS2931 chassis is just awesome. Um, I'm still not sick of this game. Uh, it is absolutely cranking. Oh, I should have used my card, shouldn't I? But anyway, I mean, we've done a lot of this recently in terms of tech and it just doesn't get old. Tech and five guys, this is, this is where it's at it's just bright colorful and just so much fun <laughs> so what do i have to do with this cab well i do of course have to get the uh nice i do have to get the double um double player now here Other, you know because half of the fun in this is playing against another human so I've got to do that and then mount those card readers, both card readers, um, and have that running with the Namco. So I want to do that. That's, that's really the first, first thing I want to do. But I'm also conscious that um, <laughs> I, uh, I need to use this for more than just Tekken because this monitor is so beautiful. And, this, and, you know, and, and being in this position, especially when you've got the, the, the double controls, Oh, that's interesting um the double controls it's a great way to play and sit down and especially you know going from the shmups over to this side and playing as well i'm gonna lose here <laughs> there we go um it's uh it, it needs it needs well, i need to use the screen more um i mean this is effectively a playstation 2 game you know it's playstation 2 hardware in the namco 256 and it just looks so so good and i think 
I can leverage that by playing more sort of PS2 aligned titles. I mean, Namco 256 came out with a number of other games, but of course this could play the whole PS2 library. And for that matter, I could even play a lot of PS3 games as well. And on this monitor, um, given it's VGA, I'd have to go 480i or 480p out of the uh, PS3 multi out. Um, but that's possible, guys, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that a bit later on. But anyway, this this is just, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> again so pleased that this is now running in here. These two machines, this is the little Japanese corner. I'm loving it, guys. I really am. I, this, this is... This is part of this whole ultimate arcade setup, you know, for me anyway, is to have these two with these big screens, vertical, horizontal, side by side, sitting down, comfortable, Japanese orientation. It's it's awesome. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's enough of that one. Let's flick on to the next. So guys, this is a bit of a difficult one. This is the uh, um, World Rally. And uh, I, even to this day, I still think of Sega Rally when I think of this, but this is, of course, um, Jaleco's World Rally. And, you know, this was the one where we swapped in the TV tube um, with a arcade chassis, and we did that, you know, way back. So go back and check that episode out if you want to see how to take a normal TV with an arcade chassis and marry the two up. And the screen looks deluxe. It really does. It looks really, really nice. And this game is fun, you know. It's um, definitely one of the popular ones in here. Um, but having said that, and it's also in a cool APB cabinet, but of course it's just not APB. Um, but yeah, I, it's a one trick pony really. And this is a 270 degree game. It's not a 360 degree game. And I've got the outrun cabinet, which is really what I want to use for my 360 games. Um, and run out run initially and there may be some other 360 games in that cab but I don't think I'll get rid of this cab I just think that it stays a numbered in here um, it will probably be swapped out or it really would be the only machine here probably <laughs> I say that yeah but at the moment it would be the machine to swap out for outrun um, once outrun is fixed so you know cool um, just easy playing fun I'll just go on the easy level you know anyone can hop on this game guys and I know what it's about a sort of isometric 3d and cool well, cool nice slideies <laughs> it's quite forgiving like that <laughs> haven't played for a while wow um, but yeah it's just a, oh wow <laughs> it's just a uh, it's a nice game that once you get the rhythm, um, it's pretty pleasing. And, you know, especially for younger players and stuff that perhaps, you know, don't know some of these older arcade games. Um, wow, <laughs> Jesus, I've done it really bad here, guys. Not a, not a good display at all. Normally I just clear this first level <laughs> without a problem. But, nevertheless, um, it's good to sort of show that it's still fun. I'm not going to make it, am I? 55. Going to go up here. This is the final bit here. 60.0 extended play. I made it dead on 60. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we got to the second stage, guys, so might as well, might as well kick into that. But I don't know, what do you guys think of this game? Have you seen it around the place? Is it a, a favourite of yours? There's a few in this series, of course, and there's a World Rally 2. I'd like to actually get that going, would be pretty cool as well. So yeah, again, I'm so torn, guys, with this game because you know, it, it is such a easy game to get into and people like it. And at the end of the day, when I've got an arcade full of, of games, it really is not just about the games that, you know, that, that I love. Not everyone wants to, you know, play Defender, for example. <laughs> I'd love to play it, but I know a lot of people look at it and go, no, I don't want to do that. And this is one that everyone that comes in here definitely wants to play. So I don't know. I, 
I need to I need to think about it. And uh, wow, okay, made made that. Let's go to the as <laughs> we go to the next level since I'm just making it. This is the snow one, and this snow one actually I remember when I had the original monitor chassis in here. It really looked bad, and I mean it looks sort of it look, well it looks actually very good here compared to what it normally is. If, it, if the monitor doesn't show this properly, the white just ends up blowing out and it's just a big blurry mess of white and you can't even see the track. You can't see all the little undulations and, and uh, you know, tire tracks and stuff. So, you know, this, this, mo this monitor really is beautiful with this um, chassis that I got from J-Mac and, and married up with a TV tube definitely it's a nice way of doing it you can if you compare them up um, better than getting an old tube that's you know got burning and stuff this track here is really hard actually I only managed to get through it sometimes wow 59 <laughs> ah, a bit of a roll here guys um, okay well we're on to medium now. So that was the three stages of easy. Let's keep going, huh? Um, I'm uh, not likely to to get through them all, that's for sure. But while we're on a roll, guys, we might as well do it. I quite like how it does that, how the car sort of just spins out, sort of gives you another chance um, without, you know, flipping out all the time and I, I think that's another nice thing about this game which is why it makes it so sort of accessible is it's, it's forgiving so there's nothing worse than playing a game where you're sort of crashing all the time you know pole position the original pole position is bad for that you know you just touch another car and you explode <laughs> I mean, what what happened to just bumping bumping racing you know um, pole position does not allow you to do that at all Okay, well, maybe, <laughs> how long can I go, <laughs> how long can I go guys, are you getting bored, <laughs> sorry about this, I was only supposed to do like a quick go, but it's like, well, okay, I'm definitely going to crash out here, because this night racing is where it starts getting really hard, and again, this is another level that if you don't have the monitor just right like I can see a bit of the road there when there's where there's no light from my car but I remember on the original monitor I could not even see any part of the road you'd only see the road in the headlights because that was the contrast and brightness was just you just couldn't get it right oh shoot I pfft, zoned out there um, but this is perfect you know I can just see it like dusk this monitor really is, oh, I forget how beautiful this monitor is actually, it's, it's certainly not um, as good as the MS3129 on the Seeker Blast, but I'll tell you what, it is up there in terms of sort of colour accuracy and brightness, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not going to make it guys, thank God, because <laughs> otherwise we'll be here all night. It says time exceeded. It still lets you sort of finish up to a certain time. I think it's 80 and then um, then it stops. Everyone's glowing red. So they got red LEDs or something in their, in, in their hands and on their head. <laughs> um, yeah, time out. So, so you can see, guys, I actually enjoy, you know, I enjoy playing it. Um, every time I come back, it's, you know, even though it, those earlier levels are somewhat easy, although I did struggle a little bit through them. <laughs> it's still heaps of fun. The only thing is the sound in here lets it down. I really need to put a 2.1 like I've done pretty much in all my other games, guys. I think if I did that in here, it might even come alive even more and I might like it even more. Actually, but this was this, this thing was really rumbling. So yeah, um, that's World Rally. It's uh, still in the theater. I was, I was still in the theater, still in the arcade. <laughs> And uh, it's, yeah, going to stay for a little bit until we get the outrun sorted out at least. All right, let's move on to the Super Sprint. Okay, well, Super Sprint, guys, is, um, you know, this is one of my grail games, I must admit. There's a lot to be done on this guy. 
And I have talked about it a little bit before in previous episodes, so I'm not going to go too much into it on this one. The only thing is that I definitely have graphical problems here. I know um, it'll be one of the ROMs or you know, it's part of the video RAM or something's going on there that's causing the track to look funny. Uh, it will play, two of the wheels work, one doesn't. I've got half my championship sprint boards in here because they use the same set, um, a system, Atari system, two boards, just the it's just a what, ROM swap. Um, and I've got the other half of the championship sprint board that I can put in. Um, I have to do a little bit of desoldering because the one that's in there now has actually hard soldered the power onto that bottom board. So I've got to desolder that and uh, put it onto a plug for the championship sprint board and then I should sort out the graphics. But other than that, I mean, the, the game actually plays fine. Um, it's an awesome game. This, you know, I've, I have been, I must admit, been a little bit in two minds about this um, recently. In fact, this game here, I tried to swap around all these games here, guys, in this corner and just try and see if I could put this in a slightly different orientation. And I just couldn't. It's a really difficult cab actually to place in your arcade. And one of the biggest things, other than the, obviously that it takes up about one and a half sizes of a normal cabinet, is the fact that the ones on the end are, po are pointing outwards. You know, the two, two steering wheels are pointing sort of out on an angle. So you need more space, you know, on either side to, to get round. Otherwise, you know, you, you can't get into the steering wheel. So it's a really difficult one to place. In the end of the day, I seriously, I spent yesterday I spent two hours moving around just this section of the arcade and pushing the stuff around, guys. <laughs> it was just a nightmare. Only to bring it all back to where it was now, like how it was originally, because this is really the best way that these machines can work. I actually had the candy cabs over here, guys, um, at one point, and just trying to squeeze them past each other is just wow. I think if anyone, if you're going to build your own arcade, guys, you think about getting a lot of cabinets, here's one thing that I'd suggest. Do not have carpet that is slightly long in pile because dragging these things around is terrible. I've got carpet sliders on some of these. This one keep blooming, you know, coming off the, the carpet sliders. At the end of the day, it'd be really nice to have wood floors in here um, and sliders to, to use on that. But anyway, so... Um, so yeah, so guys, I, I'm going to continue forward with this, this guy. I want to get the original hardware going. I want to get this wheel going. I may swap out this panel. I've got a replacement panel for it because, again, I've talked about this before. This panel wasn't the same as the normal uh, US one. Um, funnily enough, this exact same panel with these strange boxes that I think LAI put on the two end ones. I saw another one um, in an, a, an Australian sale. Uh, one of the other states had exactly the same setup which was really intriguing because i just don't know why they put these odd boxes on the end not in the middle anyway th th there is another cabinet out there that's exactly the same so i don't know what they were thinking um i do have the atari one with the proper same angled uh three small boxes so so yeah there's a lot of work to be done um <laughs> You know, I, I, I will say though, guys, you know, the championship sprint was cool because it was just, it was two player, it was, you know, it took up the same size of a normal cab. And, you know, when you play, often when I'm in here with other people, it's with someone else, like one other person. It's not normally with two other people. Um, and, and as cool as this is to play three player, I won't play three player a lot. I know that. And so it's a big cab to have in here for that. And when you've got two player, it's sort of awkward because you've either got to play either either side or one person gets the ideal position in the middle <laughs> the other one has to be on the side here um, whereas championship sprint you're, you're both sort of equal so um i don't know I, I'm, I'm just yeah these are things that go through my head guys <laughs> just sort of thinking about what what should i have in there or not end of the day i've got options i've still got the championship sprint and that's why i've kept it um, so that, you know, when I have these sort of strange thoughts, I might go and change it out, keep the Super Sprint somewhere else and then bring it back. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, I do feel that I need to get through this, get it going, at least get that all, all that stuff sorted and then make a decision um, about it. But more than likely it will stay, I think. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the virtual pin. 
So guys, the virtual pen, I uh, recently covered this and uh, showed some of my top 10 uh, penny games. This is just, just really, really awesome, this cabinet. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, someone mentioned recently again about the whole thing about, you know, real pinball just blows this away, and, and it does. It's nothing, I, I agree 100%, you cannot compare real pinball with this. I'd have real pinball tables all day, every day, if I could. Uh, but it will give you the ability to check out cabs um, and games and you know ones that, you, that maybe you can't afford even if you do have a selection of real pins uh, or you don't have the space for or you just can't get um, all of those options this gives you the ability to check those games out and play them to a reasonable level um, of um, realism but yeah, you're never going to get the real true pinball experience, there's no doubt about it. But um, I uh, recently saw that um, VP10, someone released this table, which is the World Cup table, which is the original original um, machine that this, this machine actually was. So I thought it was quite, um, quite cool that someone's uh, done a VP10 version of it. And so I've got the real play field here up on the wall. Uh, and the uh, the real back glass because um, that's what this is what this machine was before I converted it so it's cool to be able to play it um, it is a bit of a weird sort of uh, game I think um, in terms of in terms of layout and the way it works I'll show you some of the gameplay <laughs> <laughs> this was a really weird thing about this guys um, the sounds <laughs> for a soccer game so you can sort of hook it back in oh, if I can get it flicked in there by the way I changed the little graphic there to make it look like more like a soccer ball <laughs> do you see that you do that in VP it looks really cool um, but yeah, it's sort of unique in that you, you can't, you know, you try and catch the ball here and it will actually go into that little hole and then it shoots it up here and you've got to get it into there. So it's not like most games where you can like hold the ball, which in itself gives it a little bit of extra, you know, a bit of something different because you, you, you've really got to take a shot when it's on the flipper. So I don't know. It's it's just one. It's one of those ones. I think if you if you really if I really had the original going, I probably would like it. You know. Um, but I don't think it's a classic, right? It's no eight ball deluxe. <laughs> That's for sure. But so whoever did this, um, and apologise because I can't remember who actually did this VP10 version. This is really really nice. I remember seeing an earlier VP9 version of this table, uh, or even was it a VP8? Oh no, I think it was VP9. And um, again, full props to that person and using the the VP9 um, technology, but it wasn't a patch on this version, and that's because obviously VP10 is so good. Um, but yeah, you know, I think playing these, these sorts of games, guys, um, you know, just giving it some time and you can really have some fun. And VP, again, it just allows you to check these games out. You see one of these come up in Gumtree or your local paper or something, you don't know how it plays, don't know how it sounds, you know, VP is the way to, way to do it, you know, visual pinball and, and off you go, try it out. So. So yeah, anyway guys, I thought it was really cool to have this table, given that uh, this is what this pinball table was, so... Anyway, let's uh, move on from here. So guys, we move on to the uh, the main machine, the main machine, not the main machine, the main machine. Uh, with the triple screen, of course, and covered this a few times in previous uh, videos. It wasn't situated here though, it was on the other side of the room. But I had to make room for the basketball machine that's coming, so... This is now here, and this, of course, uh, has taken the, uh, the place of the um, ice cold beer or the virtual ice cold beer machine that I had here with the big circle screen for those of you that have watched previous uh, episodes. 
will know that that was normally here. And I think look, at the end of the day, guys, I the 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 Mac, the Apple Mac that I had running for the drums that were here, was also feeding or supplying um, video for the uh, for the ice cold beer, and it was still emulating um, or running. Um, running Windows through VMware and, um, and and that wasn't actually ideal anyway because it wasn't run, running just native Windows and getting the full power of the hardware and so it was a little it was a little bit sluggish playing Ice Cold Beer virtually like that but of course the drums moved and the and the Mac went with it so I had set up here um, just another a MacBook um, uh, Air actually and, and that was pretty underpowered and I was still virtualizing it as well running VMware um, and it just it was blowing a gale that poor little MacBook Air and, um, and I just felt that that game hasn't had a lot of use here and the way that I had the screen in behind the big you know the big circular plastic thing um, it, it, the screen didn't have very good field of view on it what it really needs guys is like you know do away with that big round screen and just have a massive really nice clear um you know um vertical monitor to play ice cold beer with a ball that's you know pretty much the size of the real ball on the real arcade so i've got some thinking to do about that but in the moment i've taken that machine put it into the study and then moved this guy here now this is next to the daytona of course and the intention always was to get the other daytona which i have sitting outside in this spot here anyway which means that this machine would be packed down because it's my home built one and I really don't want to sort of keep it um, in terms of it being home built it's pretty pretty scrappy I've got a lot of cool cabs now I want to take the internals out of this though and I want to put it in the LAI fat boy machine um, and then I would have this space free to put the Daytona the second Daytona in now that that's the that was always well that was the the recent plan um, I'm gonna continue to think about that guys um i still don't particularly like this machine it's it's a little bit uh a little bit dodgy but it does do the job that it does very well and it holds the fridge at the moment i can't put the fridge in the lai fat boy so there's a few things i need to do first i don't think i'm going to get the other art daytona in here quickly anyway because there's so much to do on the one that's outside i want to get that all sorted we'll talk about that in a minute anyway so I think this anyway, this one's going to stay here for a while guys. I think it's actually pretty nice here. I had it positioned here originally um, uh, when I think I first started this channel. Um, it was sitting here and the cool thing about that was that the um, all the screw holes for the monitor um, holder was already there. So when I switched it from the other side of the room it was like, oh great, I don't have to drill any holes for once. There's bloody holes everywhere around this room because I've just moved stuff and drill, drill, drill. So it was so cool to just flick that across. It looks really nice here. I remember saying it on the on my very, I think, first video, a couple of first videos when I was talking about the room as it was set up then. And this was here. I love coming into the room, seeing the seeing the triple screen, you know, seeing this artwork and stuff from the games. It really, really works well. And um, you know, even though the control panel needs sorting out. Um, it still can play spinners and trackball games and stuff. It does look really good on the screen, um, even though it's not a, not a CRT. So I don't know, guys. I'm 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 a bit torn still. I think give it some time. I'm not going to rush it, and we'll see what happens. The other cool thing here is there's a lot of space opened up in front of here. Um, or you know, part of you know getting rid of the verses, <laughs> packing that down. Is the space in here is really really good. And again, if anything, that's one of the other things in this room that I really, really like now is just the space and where all the machines are. You know, even when I try to move the Super Sprint around and, and then just realize that no, actually how I've got it is perfect in here and it's the maximum best use of the space. So anyway, guys, um, we won't uh, harp on too much more on the main machine. Uh, there's been some other videos on it. We might get back to it another day, of course. And of course, every main game is on there, um, which is a great way to explore uh, the different games. So um, a keeper for the moment, <laughs> and I'm loving it in terms of the artwork and stuff. Um, we'll see what happens. So moving from here, let's go to the Daytona. So guys, <laughs> The Daytona is still awesome. 
It always will be, right? <laughs> it is the classic game of the 90s. And this cabinet, um, you know, I bought it and got it working. It really hasn't had anything more done to it than that. So once I get that one outside all spruced up and stuff, that'll be the one that will come in here. That one outside needs a new monitor. I've got that new monitor. So once that's all done, I bring it in. Um, it will replace this one. Um, that will be the first part. And then this one will go out, and then this one will go through the whole treatment and, uh, and, and, and also get done up. And then I'll sort of think about well, what am I going to do? Am I going to do the twin setup in here or what? Because I, t I, I tell you what, man, this seriously is a really nice setup, even just having a single player. It's just a really, really nice game, and it gives me all the extra room. And I just, it's sort of a little bit like the Super Sprint, you know? How many times am I going to get, you know, two players in here? But having said that, this game is so good when you're playing head to head. Um, it's a difficult one, eh? Hey? It's a really, really difficult one. Um, so I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. For now, it's all sweet. The only thing is, is that this particular setup that I've got now and the boards that are in here, I do have a problem with one of the ROMs, and it's on the expert track. And part of the expert track, it actually the graphics go really weird in one part. Still perfectly playable. Um, everything else is perfect with it. But that one part, it goes funny. The other thing is, is that you, and you may have heard it throughout this video, which is really annoying, but there's been some crackling, some sound crackling coming from this right-hand speaker. Um, so I don't know what's causing that. Um, I haven't even had a, a chance to have a look at it, but occasionally the right-hand speaker will just start crackling for no, no reason. Other than that though, we are all sweet. So let me just show you, I'll get into the game, we'll do the expert mode and I'll show you that bit where it goes funny. Turn it up a little bit. Okay, guys, so what I'll do is because I uh, accidentally chose beginner, we'll just go and have a quick beginner race. And again, this game just doesn't get old, guys. And I still need to sort out the force feedback, that's the other thing, that it's not working on this, uh, this machine. Um, but you've still got a bit of, um, the steering wheel's still firm, so it's not like really soft or anything. So you still get a nice feel to it, but you just don't get the, the, uh, the knocks and stuff. Wow, a bit rusty. But I could just go on, and I have got on about this game. <laughs> it's how cool it is. And it's really hard in beginner. I think we've mentioned this before. It's really hard in beginner to get first place. You know, harder I think than the uh, the second track, the advanced track. And I must admit, I mean, I've been, I've been playing the advanced track mostly. I used to really, really like this track because this, again, was the one that you'd always play when you were putting money in the machine, simply because you sort of felt like you got the uh, the best chance of playing for a long period of time. Well, that was pretty cool. Um, so I always used to do this. Of course, you know, hardcore Daytona races would be. Uh, getting onto the advanced and expert tracks, even when they're paying for it. And having this at home now, of course, you can spend the, oh wow, spend the time to play all modes. And, and look, even expert, I'm starting to warm to, you know? It's a little bit more technical, but it's one of those things, you know, once you start getting to know the track, which gear you sort of need to be in and you get that flow happening <laughs> not a good demo um, then it can be just so much fun whoa things like that happen uh, 
dropped her place at the end, so got seventh. But yeah, <laughs> I, seriously, I don't know what it is. So every time you hop in and play this game, you get the same level of enjoyment that you did when you first played it. Now, this is your it, name. It's just really weird. Okay, all right, well this time let's get the uh, expert course and see if we can find this weird part. Gentlemen, start your engines. hard to get that start off the line without wheel spinning like crazy. Oh there you go. Look at that. <laughs> so all the graphics went really weird there. Um, but you still could get still get through it. And the rest of the track is all, all okay, so some problem whoa, some problem with the ROM. I'm really not good at this track. Um, but I do I do <laughs> I do like it nonetheless. I'm sort of concentrating here guys if you haven't figured it out. <laughs> so I'm not doing so well. so good how you can just jam these gears like you did in the arcade, smack the machine around and it still survived. I actually knew that corner was a much slower corner, why I went in there so hot. Make it. Oh, can you believe? We're right on the line. <laughs> anyway, guys, so you saw where it, uh, the graphics sort of um, a bit funny, but that's only 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 problem. Um, and I'm sure it's just you know one one. Hopefully, it's just a ROM swap somewhere along the line. I'm trying to find the right ROM though, which one that causes it. So yeah, guys, um, doesn't get old. Love Daytona. All right. Right, guys we will finish up i think at this point because this video is going to get really long otherwise and i'm pretty sure it's pretty long already so this is part one and we'll have a second part where we go around the rest of the arcade so you can see what's going on here uh, i hope you did enjoy this video and you get a bit of a insight into my thinking of where the arcade is going as i said i'm i'm really really starting to like what i've got here and each machine has a purpose um, but yeah there's still so many things in my mind about you know just other machines and I do I do want to get a vector and look a quick shout out to Arcade Jason by the way who has subscribed thanks man for subscribing Arcade Jason's got an awesome channel the guy's super intelligent when it comes to arcade stuff does amazing amazing things with vectors has got a house full of vector machines. If you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you do, RK Jason. Um, 
somehow I need to get a vector machine in here. That's the one thing that I'm missing on my journey to get the ultimate arcade. So hopefully I can make something happen to do that. So really jealous, uh, Jason, of all your <laughs> vector machines that you got out there. God, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, but one day, one day I will get a vector and that will, you know, that will really complete things in here. There's a few other things um, which will come out in the second part of this video. So make sure you do check that out. And uh, until then, guys, um, yeah, seriously, do look after yourself like always and play your games and fix your games and all that good stuff. And thanks for subscribing. Give this uh, uh, video a like. It, it will help out. Um, we are fast advancing towards February the 20th where we make a thousand subscribers so I don't get booted off the YouTube partner program. Probably not. <laughs> Probably going to get booted. But uh, hopefully sometime thereafter we'll get back on there um, and let make YouTube pay, <laughs> pay for the channel. Uh, but yeah, again, regardless, guys, still enjoying this, still loving doing this for you guys and for myself. Um, so look forward to seeing you back um, until then of course uh, as always I, I do want to uh, carry on playing and I do this really bad acting thing at the end where I'm sort of searching around for coins so that I can finish off with the tagline which is have you got a 20? Chicken fight like a robot